Howdy folks, Dredgehells here, and welcome back to World of Tanks. Uh, I'm doing a little bit of a different format today. I'm just going to dive straight into the gameplay. Uh, I've tried to adjust my audio and video settings. Um, I still have some problems with some background noise, but hopefully it's a lot better than than last uh, video that I had commentary on. So, right to the gameplay. Today we're going to be looking at a game I had in my RU251. And we are on Malinovka, standard mode. And initially, what I tr like to try to do on games that are this high tier and that have a decent amount of, of vision on either either team, they both had tier, tier 9 scouts and they have some high tier mediums, is I don't initially go for this bush here that I would normally in a lower tier game, or if there was only one scout on each team or one scouting typed tank potential on each team is I like to go that that initial shallow cross around the the first part of the field to try and get a sharper angle on the approach line that the enemy scout usually takes to get to their bush and I try to prevent them from getting into the bush unspotted right that's my entire goal I don't care if I get spotted and initially I can zig and zag and hopefully I survive but my main goal is to prevent the enemy scout from getting into their bush because if they get into that bush there my team's gonna have all kinds of problems right so I kinda take the the uh, preventative approach first but instead of just trying to spot exclusively um, passive there so and now I'm playing relatively conservatively here. This is mainly because uh, I wasn't able to get into that normal bush early and wasn't really spotting anything. But if you know something interesting about this position as opposed to the traditional spotting location kind of over there in F5 or, or uh, E4, is that you can actually spot the perch over in, um, in F7 a little bit better, provided that you have good enough U range because um, it's kind of right on the edge of the just inside the 445 meters spotting distance circle so this means that you have to have really really good view range either really good uh, crew if you're just using coded optics or um, using binox it's because the enemy tanks that sit over there on the perch usually have really good, good camo rating and they're sitting in a bush so even if they fire you know the camo rating drops and you know the camo bush mechanic changes but uh, you need to have really, really good view range. Is my my point. So this is something that I don't traditionally do. Um, I and the main reason that I'm doing this is because we have a ton of people that are sitting in our spawn still. We have, I believe, five tanks, and there's three artillery on each side. So uh, I don't like games, um, the dispersion, matchmaking type thing that happens when you have three RD on each side that means there's less tanks to go around to cover positions on a map so there's usually more holes um, in, in flank positions at the beginning of a game it makes it more difficult for team deployment plus the RD themselves are shooting tanks as they deploy so I decide that it's probably fairly safe that was safe for me to drive into this bush line because the T95 was probably sitting in that bush area over there in um, let's see there, J4, and he wasn't like over in K3 or something where he would have a sharper angle on me in my approach line. So right now, I'm the main reason that I'm taking this kind of less traditional spot that I go to is my team are camping, right? Like I said before, so I have to, I can't make them move, so what I have to do is I have to spot for them for wherever they are, right? So find, find the position on the map that you can give vision for your team and give them shots for wherever they are. So we didn't send anyone to the hill, so um, we got the conqueror spotted as he's pushing off the hill. Made a mistake there, knock it over a tree as I'm sitting in this bush. Um, and I should have relocated to a slightly different position because Artie might be pre-aimed here watching um, and other tanks might be watching that too. So I move here. But uh, I should have moved as soon as I knocked down that tree. And right now we have a little bit of a closer angle on trying to spot the uh, the F7 perch there for the enemy team. This is a, a pretty good location if this is the kind of dispersion that happens um, on Malinovka or, or as far as your team goes. Um, a lot of this I think has to do with the fact that none of my team wants wanted to make the A the A line climb to the hill because they know they're just going to get arty to death with the three artillery in the game. So, I mean, 
I wish they would have deployed a little bit, you know, better, but I can't blame them for not wanting to spend like two to three minutes driving into position and then getting RD'd the rest of the game and dying the next minute or so. So we're getting the M50 there, or E50M spotted there, excuse me. And then the bad chat who's sitting right behind me is putting some good shots in. I'm not too worried about him firing right behind me because I see that he's sitting a little further back from me. So he's he's got these bushes that I'm in as a, as cover. So you probably won't get spotted firing at the E50 in there. This bad chat was a really, really good teammate to work with. Um, surprisingly, I'm not getting any assistance damage on this on the 705. Uh, I think it's mainly because either either the bat chat was spotting him because he had a slightly different angle, um, or or the Jagdpanzer was spotting for himself potentially. Unfortunately, there um, in my decision to relocate there, you know, if you notice that every time there's a lull in the action and I don't think that there's gonna anything else gonna be happening. Um, I start to move my positioning, right? And unfortunately, um, the enemy T-49 moved up and got me spotted there. So he's in a really, really good position, that enemy T-49. And um, I have no idea what was going on here. Um, yeah. So instead of, instead of fighting the enemy team, my team are deciding to fight each other. I'm not sure why this 60 TP started shooting our... our um, Panzer 7. Um, I know that the 60 TP started this, as if it matters who started what, but I think he was the instigator in that situation from how I was watching Chad and, and how it was happening in the battle, and obviously he turned blue, so. So now I'm relocating back here and trying to spot their base campers, right, because we have to win one flank or the other or we're going to lose this game. So we either need to clear out their base campers or we need to um, shoot the enemy team as they come down the hill, right? So now I'm figuring, well, it's going to take too long to dig out these these base campers, right? Because they got pretty good cover. They got buildings, they got bushes, and there's potentially three or more of them. So it's going to take a little too long here. So I'm going to do something a little risky here. I'm assuming that the Jagdpanzer has left since he lost a lot of his HP from my spotting earlier and he probably wanted to move to a different location. So I'm assuming it's only the T95 and the Jagdtiger here. And since I didn't get lit there when I was retreating on a sharper line, I know I can kind of surf and coast a little bit further than I normally do here. And I don't get anything spotted there. Uh, I was potentially doing that to try and get a better angle on the F7 perch there. Now the E50M is way too far away to have spotted me there considering my camera rating, so I know the T49 over in C6 is the guy who spotted me, because I know what position he's using it, because I use the same position. I know exactly what bush he's in. And you'll see, as soon as I crest up here, as soon as he gets lit, I, I, I'm able to shoot him, because I know exactly where he is. And that's why we were able to get our shot off so quickly. And funny enough, uh, the T49 uh, makes a little driving error. Uh, the back side of that little steep draw there is, is, is pretty pretty steep. So if you don't drive too carefully, you uh, will take damage falling. So uh, I was planning to move back up and try and, you know, to that position I was using earlier in, in, in C5 to maybe spot the hill and, and whatever. But unfortunately, the enemy E100 is deciding to move up and be more aggressive and trying to drive radically here to avoid getting shot by the enemy artillery. Waiting for my spots to drop here, and then I'm trying to decide how I want to how I want to spot this. The enemy uh, Jagdpanzer E100 was also moving up, but I'm not sure why he was doing that. He was a one-shot from me doing that earlier and I come back to base here and my team are still shooting each other here for some reason our 60 TP apparently I don't know if he finished killing our Panzer 7 or, or what happened there I wasn't really paying attention but um, the the heavies in my base are spending more time shooting each other than than trying to shoot the enemy team so that isn't helping things 
So now, um, actually, I don't think I initially spotted this T95 crossing. Um, I'm helping uh, spot him now, but my team don't really need help for that. I think it was our, our guys in G1 who spotted him starting to push up. Uh, but I am spotting this Egg Tiger here, so I'm, I start communicating to my team here that I w they should kill the Egg Tiger first, right? Because he has lower hit points and he's easier to penetrate, more importantly. He's the easier gun to take out of the fight. So as soon as he dies, right, um, potentially I could push this T95, right? Depending on what other sniper support that the, the team has. Um, fortunately, our Object 263, who is uh, shooting over there in G1 behind us, is taken out. But I move up here a little bit, and then I decide I don't really need to. Uh, I just need to change my angle. And our team did some really good shooting there. Um, the T95 isn't the easiest thing to, to penetrate in the world, and they were taken out. So now, um, I have a really, really good angle, spotting angle I can take. Now that the enemy base uh, tanks are taken out, as far as, we are, as far as we know. We do a head count on the mini-map. The, there's one, two, three tanks that were spotted on the hill, and there's two other tanks, and then there's three arty. So all enemy tanks are accounted for, as far as their last spotted position. Of course, enemy tanks can move and relocate. And there we go. We spot enemy artillery trying to relocate to a safer position. Don't have a good shot on the M5355, so we take a shot at the Object 212. I don't want to push up too far yet, because I'm worried that the E50M is still over there in that perch. But, um, you notice that if the E50M, oh, pro driving there, if you notice that if the E50M was sitting in that position, or at least in a way that he could spot me, uh, he would have easily spotted me when I, and when I uh, shot at that two, Object 212 artillery. So, um, it's little things like that when you're watching in a battle, you're like, so, oh look at that, and the E50M was there. Uh, maybe he was for sitting up further to the north side of that location and the bushes were solid on his left So he couldn't see me when I shot that was probably what was happening But now uh, I'm getting some really good support from the bat chat here, and I make a misplay here. I kind of pansy out uh, I'm afraid that uh, We're just not gonna get enough support here, but I'm the one who should be giving more support to this bat chat here and I shouldn't have I could have shot this uh, uh, 113 twice already, probably, if I had just stopped and been more careful. I was afraid that I wasn't able to shoot this 113 without getting spotted, but I can. Fortunately, I don't time that shot right, and he turns his hull to angle his armor. And I think our bat chat probably would have died uh, anyway, but I didn't... I wasn't efficient with my my support of him, right? Uh, I should, like I said, if I could have probably gotten two more shots into him easily, and and he would be dead by now. So we get another shot into him, and now he's a one shot. Um, but now, unfortunately, he's angling his armor to us. I could load a heat shell here, and maybe I could pin his hole, but that's a pretty iffy shot because I don't have a whole lot of penetration. So I'm deciding to relocate here. I'm trying to have our art artillery kill him is, is, my, is my goal here. The enemy tanks who are up on the hill are deciding to push off here. So there's only a minute left in the game. So I'm deciding that, well, if we're going to win the game, then I have to trust that my team is going to kill those tanks and I need to kill artillery, right? Because there's no way that my team are going to get over here in time to kill artillery. So my job is to, to take out enemy artillery and, and maybe we can win. I load a high explosive here, shell here, um, I don't necessarily need to, but I want to make sure that I guarantee that I two shot this M5355. Um, uh, a technique that I failed to do later on. Alright, so we got him taken out, and it looks like my team are actually uh, dealing with the enemy tanks that are pushing off the, the hill just fine. And unfortunately, um, I can't kill this 113 in time. I, I can't stop and shoot him because I only have 20 seconds left, right? So I have to kill the GW100 and trust that my artillery is going to take out the 113. 
and we find the GW E100 over here. I should have loaded high explosive for my next shell because I would have taken him out here with my second shot. And unfortunately, I'm going to throw the game here because I didn't hit my shot carefully and I hit his hole instead of his superstructure. And I lose the game. Thanks, guys, for watching. Take care.